Hello everyone, welcome back to our security series. My name is Goran and I come to you from the technical marketing team with Security and Business Group. In this video today we're going to talk about how to use an FTD device package we released without APIC. This means that you can orchestrate FTD device level configurations like routed, transparent, inline IPS mode using the workflows and procedures that have been built into FTD device package and they all will use the REST APIs with Firepower Management Center 6.2. I know this may confuse some of you but bear with me. All of the work that we have done for FTD device package should be applicable to any other orchestration of our FTD device using FMC. FTD device package has been posted on Cisco.com. It is a fabric insertion uh, device package that supports this version of APIC and obviously works with 6.2 FMC. If you exclude APIC and you use it manually with the scripts that I'm going to show you today, um, your APIC dependency is really not relevant then. To explore FMC REST APIs, you can go to this link that you see on the bottom left and you will see this interface that will allow you to explore what kind of procedures you can use, whether they are GET, POST, uh, PUT or DELETE. In this demo we're going to focus on FTD unmanaged service graph, so what we're going to do is configure our APIC and fabric with an unmanaged service graph uh, and then we're going to use our script to match those configurations from APIC and orchestrate that configuration through FMC on our FTD that is our ASA 5525 platform running FTD image. So here you can see we have our web and app EPGs, we have a couple of hosts one in each EPG and we're going to test that connectivity through our FTD device using the unmanaged service graph because remember this will not work if APIC had not uh, told the ACI fabric to put that service graph in place. So let's switch gears now and take a look at our APIC. Here I have a tenant that has three EPGs. We're going to be focused on web and app EPGs. We're going to put a contract in place and get that service graph to work for us. Here under devices I have registered my ASA5525 appliance running FTD image as an unmanaged device. I have simply told APIC uh, which fabric interfaces it's connected to and down below here on the cluster interfaces I had given its in caps that I will be matching through my scripting the VLAN 1500 and 1501. So as we look at this service graph that we create remember with unmanaged we don't care about configurations where function profiles come into play so here we simply skip to our service graph and there, the only other item we have to make sure in our EPGs and attachments of this service graph, whether those uh, EPGs and bridge domains they belong to have an SVI or any CAS gateway in those. And in this case, the web does have one. Um, if we just take a look to show you where that is under the web bridge domain subnets, I have this. SVI defined and under app I don't so that's the only difference there that I was showing you here so now we have our picture of the APIC just to make sure that we have everything on the FMC side here I have a policy with a single predefined rule I'll be attaching these interfaces through security zones into source and best zones here I have allowed certain protocols and I can attach my intricate policies here in terms of NGIPS and malware for example. Under devices I have my ASA5525 and it has these interfaces, it's clean config at the moment. 
So right now let's configure our APIC for unmanaged service graph, but before I get that in place, um, I guess I'll <clears throat> show you here our two endpoints. We have those interfaces into their port groups EPGs, and if I try to communicate between them right now, they are not reachable. Uh, here on the top left I have my Linux box where I took the FTD device package, unzipped it, and I copied the two scripts um, into this directory that I have posted also on Cisco-Security GitHub. Uh, so these scripts can then be used to configure and unconfigure this um, topology onto our FTD device. So first, let's go back to our APIC and we'll use the wizard to create a contract between web and app. And here we are using our unmanaged device that we see here. We have to select and match our cluster interfaces to their bridge domains, which is web and app, and this should create the contract in place. Um, under its subject, we have our service graph applied. If we take a look at our tenant, we don't see any errors, which means things are orchestrated properly, and here we can see the selection policy as well as deployed graph instance in place. So now let's take a look at our scripting. So here we'll simply open up one of these files for creating this configuration. I am importing one procedure service audit from the FTD device package that's in the same directory and I had gone through and updated some of the parameters so we can give the which interfaces here we want to use how to name those interfaces which VLAN tags zones created also the BVI IP and also the <clears throat> name of the policies and rules that we want to create in our case here we're gonna attach our zones to existing rules and then we're gonna create one rule that's gonna be a deny rule this is um, a few more items here in terms of what FTD IP and FMC IP is, the credentials of how to log in as an administrator into FMC, and whether we use a virtual FTD or not, we're using physical appliance in our case, and what BVI to place there. If we take a look at these configurations here, this is the device config that I had copied from APIC debug.log and this was when we were using managed service graph. If we look in debug.log under this directory here you see on the right, um, this kind of configuration will be given and on GitHub I also included that for you so you can see how it was sanitized uh, to be used as a simple Python script you see here. The next section here includes the configuration for that device, which is where we start to configure some of the device level configurations. I'll let you review those on your own. So here I am simply going to run our Python script, and here you're going to see similar types of logs that we see in a debug.log. Uh, this script is now using device package to establish a uh, connection into FMC and start to configure all the same items that APIC would configure with the managed service graph, but now we're using it directly from the script into FMC. As this is happening, we can take a look at our FMC and see first that the uh, API user on my script is modifying the device. I can take a look here and see that the device is already out of date with the policy. Um, we had not started updating the policy but if we look at the device itself I can see now 
those VLAN sub interfaces named properly BVI IP and if we take a look at the policy again here oh under here under deployment I can see that the script already told FMC to go ahead and deploy this to our ASA 5525 um, those kinds of messages here we can see that there's a deployment request given so that's what's happening now from FMC to FTD so now if I take a look at my policy and what I had asked the script to do is to attach these security zones with a bi-directional type um, to rules so I had one existing rule and I had one new rule and you can see that the new rule is given in blocking so if you predefine your rules you can simply attach your security zones into them so by now this deployment is almost done and what I'll do is I'll just uh, start the ping again and I can see that ping is actually already happening and um, maybe do a couple of more protocols here maybe a wget I can see that HTTP works um, so those two just to verify that they're going through the service graph here I can go to analysis and connections and see that those logs are showing up I can see an ICMP connection and I see HTTP connection wget between the two hosts that I have set up. So that's how you would configure FTD through FMC using FTD device package without APIC, just simply using scripting. If you wanted to tear down this configuration, obviously if APIC takes out the service graph itself, it's simply going to tell the fabric to remove it and in turn this will stop our connectivity that we had in place because the fabric has to be in place um, you know to get traffic to FTD device so if we want to clean up this configuration I've included that script also for you um, that simply uses a different procedure and you have to set up the state information for the device and all the configs to 3 um, that means to delete those items so I will just uh, start that script as well here and it will again log into the FMC and then start removing all those items that we had configured earlier so looking at our FMC again we'll take a look at the policy and see that policy had already been cleaned up if we take a look at our device it's also cleaned up the BVI and its sub interfaces at this point it's probably going to deploy that configuration and clean up our FTD device that's managed by FMC before we close one last item to show you is the location of those scripts you can see here under Cisco security FMC rest API scripts I have included the three scripts that uh, we had mentioned here for configuring layer 2 firewall without APIC hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching